Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us, as they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table. The story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Throwers Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Hello, and welcome back to Bone Throwers Theater. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and I had been playing Gunner Black in our Lasers and Feelings one shot. This is Jeff, and I was playing Felix Lamar. This is Johnny, and I was uh, going to cut you. Was Doctor, going to cut you. <laughs> I'm a cut you. And I'm Jordan, and I'm not going to cut anybody, but I was the GM, so I guess that is kind of like... You cut everybody all everybody, the time. Right? Yeah. And no, I'm, you good us. <laughs> and I'm Jackie, and I was doing AS5. AS5, the droid. The droid. I've been slimed. So what did you guys think of lasers and feelings as a system? It was interesting. I the the dice dynamic was interesting. A very simple dice dynamic. Yeah. I think cuz it was a one shot, we got less into the actual feeling side of yeah, things mm-hmm. and we were, it was all action well, based. I tried to I tried to kind of channel it yeah. towards that. It, well, and then you're like, nope, not going into the weird house. I'd say the one downfall for the dice dynamic, I would say instead of it being a one through five, yeah, I would say it should be a two through four. Yeah, I could see that. Um, there are... Because it was just, it was too easy when you select one extreme or the other. So, yeah. John Harper actually released it as a Creative Commons game, and he said basically remix it however you want. There's a lot of different hacks to it. Yeah. And one of them, some of the hacks that I've seen use D10s rather than D6s. Oh, okay. That would yeah, work. That would yeah. work. Yeah. That would work. And I think also just the way the characters are built might lend itself to more of the feelings aspect because, I mean, yeah, you got an aspect of your character, what their job is and what a goal is, but there's still not a whole lot of meat to their right. background. Yeah. So you, you don't really get a sense of how they feel about things. Just, oh, this is their general state of, state of action, yeah. like yeah. what they're yeah. going to do. So Well, and I think of this as, like, like we were talking earlier, I, I feel like this is a very good original series Star Trek game. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like the characters really grow that much, and it, it also has a very action-oriented feel to it. But it's it's still... It can lend itself towards emotional... Oh, yes. ...storyline. Right. That's what I was saying, is if the characters were built differently, I think we would have right. got more into that. Because I was thinking also, as we are playing, we played... Uh, a while ago, we did Cosmic Patrol. Yes. And that was very campy sci-fi. Yeah, this was as, as this, campy. I thought that would be the, the thing going into it. I thought this would be, all right, this is going to be like original Star Trek kind of feel to it. As we're playing, I was like, this has still got some some grit and some darkness and some dirt to it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not clean and polished so it was like season three of the original series, as opposed to what? season one. No, I, I'd, I'd say it's, it's. I mean, lends itself to more like a well, not the the western aspect of it, but still like got that grit and disheveledness to like Firefly. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was more Star Trek than Buck Rogers. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. He, yes, but still, it was. It was. It wasn't your clean Star Trek. No. No. And also, the idea that you don't have the prime directive means that there's less moral questions that the characters are asking yeah. themselves. Well, that's why I brought that up. I was like, do we have a prime directive that would dictate how we handle this situation? Right. Because if and then do that we, were the we case, we would, have, prime directive. we would have done things completely differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think I referenced in the when we did the character build or when we were talking about it um, that showed dark matter. Yes. Yeah, and that it had that kind of vibe for yeah. me, where that show was not very clean. 
as far as the world. I because I, I just imagine whenever I think of Star Trek, I think very clean, mm-hmm. very clear cut. As yes. you like, oh, you got this is your mission. This is the prime directive. This is how you're going. Everybody is in line with that. Mm-hmm. And if they're not, that's the main conflict. Right. Whereas like dark matter, like everybody had their own agenda and that wasn't the conflict even that everybody had their own agenda. It was even more dark and sinister stuff going on outside yeah. that that was the, the main storyline of it. And all the personal agendas just added to the feelings aspect of the, the story. Mm-hmm. And I think we do that well with the interpersonal stuff in main campaigns. Yeah. I think that's because there's so much built into the background for the characters. Yeah. So. And this one doesn't really lend itself. This game particularly is completely a pickup game. Um, yeah. Which actually, one of the cool things is there's a, a little chart on the the one sheet where it's like roll or choose on the table below a threat, and then you have six options. Wants to six more options. The, and then which will. So I Almost came up fiasco style. Yeah, pick yeah, very list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like the starting phrase that I had wrote up, rolled up was a rogue captain wants to pacify or occupy the ancient space ruin, which will enslave a planet. Uh. So that was kind of the driving sentence for the adventure. Huh? Yeah. We never found what the hell shall replicate because we had the wrong captain on board. Huh? So we actually thwarted the captain's plan to dominate this planet. Yes. When we thought we were rescuing the captain. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious it is, it and he popped him immediately hilarious. back into stasis so I couldn't have the captain going what were you trying to do I nearly got away with it you know yep nope I immediately put him into a medical coma yeah that's hilarious that's funny so my idea that kind of came up in play was that there was this metallic mono cellular multi maybe multicellular at most organism that was living on this planet they had been a, a stronger structure, a, a hierarchical structure, and then had fallen apart for some reason. And the captain had discovered it, was replicating it, trying to bring it back to its former self. And the houses they were building were like coming back together and forming a society again. And so they were coming back together. So when you said 32 million organisms, yeah, that was the house. Uh, was the house uh, I gathered that. I, no, I didn't. I was like, what voodoo's going on inside yeah, that house? Got, it's like another dimension, gateway to another dimension see, I, in there. I got more of it I got more of that from the cave. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why I gathered it is I didn't gather when you were at the house itself, but Yeah. I can't throw everything out there yeah. all at once. That's why when I went to the cave wall to take a sample, I said, is it rock? Yeah. Exactly. The ca- the cave was another thing when <laughs> and this just uh, sparked memories of previous campaigns. Unfortunately, not campaigns that we recorded, but the, the caves, when, uh, Jordan, you said that they were, the life forms were in the walls, I immediately jumped back to the one Star Wars campaign we did with the lizards in the walls. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, that I even motioned to Jeff that something was going to come out of the wall and pull you into the wall. It's like, oh. Well, that yeah. was, wasn't that like the... the that was the insanity the, room. The insanity room where the, where the Sith had yeah, the, Sith the Sith temple. That was the, the treasure, hunt, treasure hunt campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Johnny did this cool thing, and this is totally off of what we just did, but it was a cool aspect to running a campaign because we had the same group of players, but we had two sets of characters and we would flip flop back and forth. One weekend we'd play as one set of characters who were trying trying to to find this treasure. And then the next weekend we'd come and play the other set of characters who were also trying to find the The same same treasure. So it was a race for a treasure hunt. So we were racing ourselves in a treasure hunt. To try and find these these artifacts that were spread across the galaxy. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. My two of my favorite Star Wars characters in that campaign. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. 
Akko the bow- bounty hunter, and then Tycho Quasar at the Holonet news for reporter. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Pierce. <Pearson, laughs> Tycho Quasar. Oh my gosh. Oh um, man. I, I wish for some reason the one set of characters with Tycho Quasar and my other guy who, Quinn, yeah. who just by luck of the draw, he was the only one in the group that had any access to any ship. So he yeah. became the pilot. He was like, he didn't want to be the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of forced into it. Forced into it. And yeah, uh, anyway, so it was, it was some good stuff. Yeah. But anyway, the cave, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah. 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 So I thought the cave was pretty good. The cave was very good. I loved your guys' solution to scramble the planet's entire magnetic field. I'm like, Oh my God. That's... Well, I was sitting there and I even said that I was like, I have an idea, and this is the thing that they would do in the TV show. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like it's, definitely, how many, it's definitely a Stargate type. Of thing. How many times have they destroyed a sun or a solar system or destroyed a? I mean, Star Trek does it all the time. Yeah, they they do. just blow up a planet for whatever. It's usually they're not the ones blowing it up. It just yes, gets it, it gets blown, blown up while they're there, or they blow it up to save the other people. Yeah, yeah. the sentient life forms. Yeah, so it's like let's do something on the. Grand solar system scale, planetary scale, yeah, to solve the solution of getting an item off of the planet. A single, item. <laughs> a single, item. a single person and a single item off the planet. We're going to destroy this whole planet just to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> sounds that's kind of what it felt like we were doing too. So one of the questions, yes, that did not get answered. What was up with those? air jellyfish creatures were those the creatures or were those another creature that were on there because uh i don't know i didn't really think about it that far in advance i, I yeah that was, I, they, I, to me they were just i think like, they're just another creature but they were influenced by the magnetic yeah so I, I was thinking that like evolution had taken this down a, a highly magnetized plant like like all life forms in this planet had the same kind of homing systems as like salmon and Carrier so when you, when yeah. you EMP the planet, you kill all the jellyfish things. Uh, I don't well, know if you did that or if you just scrambled them until I could. Well, that's them. why I was wondering what they would do because they were all just doing this weird thing around the dancing around the hole. The hole. I was like, what's going to happen? Something's got to happen when they when drop the ship in there, but they just scattered. I was like, yeah. okay. Well, I mean, they they know to get out of the way of something big and intrusive, so. But like the the ship coming into the atmosphere and going down into the hole. Aside from Jackie, I don't know if any of you have seen Discovery at all. Mm-mm. Like the opening of, of the Discovery, there's a spaceship that just comes through the clouds in a in an atmospheric entryway, and that to me that was like a really cool image in the show. It's like the ship, the first time you see a starship on or a Federation starship on the Discovery pilot, it's coming through these clouds like it's been obscured this whole long time and then it's making it an appearance for the first time and then to me like dropping the ship down into the atmosphere and going down into the tunnel was another really cool moment like that it's like oh what what can we do to kind of push the the boundaries of the of the game a little bit more and what the ships can do and all that i liked that i had fun with the goo on the ship (laughs) uh because it's like well what if you give like a silicon based life form, all the glass and metal that it can eat. Yeah. Yeah. So much for circuit boards. Nom, 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 nom. That's why you carry backups. I kind of like how the story naturally kind of flowed. You followed one, and this, I don't know if it was done this way on purpose, but you followed one group and they gathered inform- some information and then they would come back to the other group. And then the scene just jumped back to the the other group, and then followed them, and then come back, and it jumped back to the other group. It and just was like, kind of felt nice. I was like, yeah, that was yeah. that was nice how that yeah. was done. Yeah, it kind of it, it felt well. You know, it's I feel like TV in a lot of ways dictates how I game master, like uh, like storytelling cues from television. Yeah, it dictates what you think when it comes to storytelling. Right, exactly. So, like trying to emulate a. St- Star Trek feel on that just felt natural. Yeah. So one thing I would say about the actual mechanics of the game, and you had mentioned this before, I don't think we ever read off the 
suggested questions for your he did. laser feelings. I don't remember. I don't remember those. I don't remember those either. either. Okay, well, I can read through them again. Because that, cause that was one one thing I thought we could have done better, and I could talk about that after yeah. we hear these questions. He so, more I, I, thinking the proper phrasing. Yeah. Well, the there's that. There's always that, but. These are suggested questions. They're not. They're not mandatory. Um, what are they really feeling? Who's behind this? How could I get them to blank? What should I be on the lookout for? What's the best way to? And I feel like you guys asked that one fairly regularly. And what's really going on here? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought. I think that would have helped because I don't remember hearing hearing those. Um, I could have been zoned out or thinking about something yeah, for the, the, one listening at that the point. character. <laughs> but what I think would have been better than what we had done in game, because it seemed like a lot of the times we made the role yeah. and then jumped immediately to the questions before resolving what the resolving roles the was supposed to, to roll. Yeah. Because a lot of times the questions that were asked were... In regards to what you were trying to do. Yeah, it was it was like, oh, I want to scan for this on the surface of the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, I got two questions I can ask. All right, what's on the surface of the planet? I was like, yeah, you succeeded. Your role would have told you that. These additional questions should be additional information. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think we jumped right to the question sometimes rather than saying, all right, this is what you find out because you succeeded. Now you have two questions. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would have... One fleshed out the story a little story bit more. Details, yeah. yeah, probably. I think also something that could have helped with the feelings part of it is there were no other, to our knowledge, no other intelligent beings you're, you're, other than the four of us. Interaction with yeah. the other intelligent being. Yeah. yeah. Originally, when I was, if you had gone into the house, it probably would have different. Maybe, but. When I was uh, when I was planning this, I was thinking that there was a colony and another captain was trying to take over the colony or something like that, which could have offered a little bit more. But it didn't. I don't know why, but it didn't feel like it was gelling towards that direction. Yeah. So, no, I think I think the makeup of the story was still very good. Yeah, it's just the way it was done kind of left the feelings part mm -hmm. out well, of most of it. I think that part of the Part of the issue is that normally, like in a, in a, especially like a TNG Voyager episode, there's like the A story, which is typically the the moral question, the science question that's going on, and then the B story is the interpersonal one, like what's going on between two of the characters, or something like that. Like, you know, what's going on with Neelix and Cass? What's going yeah, on between yeah. Data and Troy? You know, something along those lines. And we didn't really leave room for a B story in this. You know, we could have, like, why is uh, why is the doctor really upset with the pilot? Because I'm a catcher did turn down did turn down the uh, engineer at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, we could have we could have yeah. pushed into that a little bit more. You know, and, and had a little bit of B story there, but yeah. we we didn't really have the room for it because of the one shot nature of it. Yeah. But I could have I could have pushed that a little bit more. I didn't. Yeah. So no XP for today. <laughs> None of that normal stuff that we do. I just think if we incorporate a little bit more of what we normally do for other characters. Yeah. Like we played yeah, our typical planning for half hour episodes. Yeah. I think if we put a little bit more into the characters. And focus on more of the interpersonal stuff. Then this is kind of game that probably could have stretched out to hour long episodes. Still as a one shot, yes, yeah, but yes. hour hour long episodes. Yeah, yeah. So also recording on a weekday in the in the afternoon is totally different than getting together on a weekend. And well, it's like because you're together on on Saturdays and got all day Sunday to figure stuff out. Whereas right, exactly, you know, I'll be at work and. 14 hours. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So one thing that I kind of thought about towards the end is what would the game feel like if we combined it with the questions from inspector, like the inspector's chart. Hmm. But I, I was just wondering what would lasers and feelings feel like crossed with inspectors. And you, the two times we've done inspectors, 
you've done it more of like interview style yeah to set up the characters is that where the questions were coming no, from no i was talking about the the sheet the like the you roll off the character sheet there's the list of things that you get when you roll the dice like if it's one then it's a failure if it's two it's a it's a failure if it's three it's a success with a cost Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I thought the system was, but just a, a simpler version of that. Yeah. It yeah. was. It was a little a little more simple. Amazing. Describe the result in game two franchise dice. Of course, with the franchise dice being what they are, Inspectors is set up a little bit more for a campaign than Lasers and Feelings is. But yeah, that, that was something that I was thinking of. That's be interesting to compare the two because I, the both times we played Inspectors, you did have more of the interpersonal stuff. Mm hmm. Than you did mm -hmm. with uh, lasers and feelings. That's true. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much it. Yaki, yep. thank you for joining us. Yes. Yes. yes no thank you. Especially after running ten miles yesterday. <laughs> All right. Well, then we will go ahead and let you go. Thank you so much for listening. Very be well. Thank you for listening to Bone Throwers Theater. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. That means you can share the podcast, but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you would like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is bonethrowerstheater. You can also look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.